everybody. Let's get an update on this. We've had a little bit of downtime while the car was in the paint shop. The last video you seen was we were sending it off to paint. So as you can see, it's come back from Jeff Hoskins with a bitchin' red paint job on it. Um, while the car was uh, at, during the, their painting process, which takes about two and a half to three weeks, um, we do uh, what we call pre-assembly and, and, and do some things that are, that are good to do while there's some dead time on the car, which is sending out all the anodizing, sending out the plating, getting all the little incidentals done, and we, and we do pre-assembly on all the components that we have, like we put the strut package together, the rear end housing, we put the transmission package, all the accessories on it, we outfit the engine. Um, we do as much as we can without the car, uh, while it's in the paint shop because we don't want to lose that time. So when the car comes back, we can uh, we can start throwing pieces at it. So today's Monday. This car came back uh, Friday afternoon. So they got it unloaded. My guy started on it this morning. So I'll give you kind of a, a brief little rundown. They uh, they got quite a bit done today. So we uh, we the first thing we're going to do is go over the car and check everything on it, make sure that nothing got missed in paint or, or that everything is finished properly. Then we're going to go through and start putting all the springs in it and, and putting all the brake lines, all the incidental stuff that's hard to get to once the bigger components are in it. So we'll we'll go front to back, uh, put all the hard lines on it, put the uh, uh, do, do all the riveting, do all put all the screws in it for the firewall and stuff. Um, then we'll throw the uh, mid plate in it, the motor plate, uh, engine, uh, all that stuff goes in in chunks now. So. They've, uh, you can see they've started today on the race pack uh, installation. So the race pack's in it, the wiring harsh is in it. Um, we did the uh, wiring for the switch panel while it was gone. So the wiring harness for the switch panel is all finished. So we'll click that in there and run the wires over to this corner. But um, over the next um, seven to 10 days here, we'll finish doing the uh, assembly on this. So we're, um, we're in really good shape, all the windows have been fit and sanded and all the border paint is done on them. Um, all of the finish work in the back of the car is done. The rear end is, is one complete assembly now. Third member's in it, the uh, axles are in it, brakes are on it, it's, it's all ready to drop in. So there's three guys on this during uh, uh, final assembly and um, it's just a matter of putting all the components in place now. You can see we've got the dial-in boards installed. And so we kind of start in the center of the car and work outward so that um, we don't have to go over the top of, of any of our other work. But um, it just, uh, this is a tedious part. We got to make sure we, we don't, we got to protect the paint. We, we want to keep it nice. So we, we have um, felt that we use on the quarter panels that we just tape on here during the day while the guys are working on it, just so we don't get any scratches on anything. But this is the process that you see after it comes out of paint. So the, the detail works really good. You, from the other videos you see we got the the chassis was powder coated before it went off to Jeff but the finish work on it is awesome I mean he does a fantastic job and these guys they'll take their time we don't like to get in a hurry when we're doing final assembly because you want to make sure everything fits nice and all of the panels get a little extra sanding and the edges finished on them and so there's there's a this is a time consuming process it does not go fast and we don't like just to throw these cars together we like to make sure that everything fits properly and that it comes apart. We don't just want to put it together one time. For instance, you know, the back window Zeus is in and out. Well, we don't want to just Zeus it in one time. We want to make sure it goes in and out smoothly so you can clean this back area of the car. So, you know, there's some adjustment to all these springs that need to be made and we'll put the window in and out a few times to make sure that that clicks in and out of there and all the Zeus's are tight. And it's a pain in the ass sometimes because you, know, you might have one Zeus, you might have the back window in and one of the springs is just a little loose or something. You got to take the window out and fix that. You can't you can't leave it because the Zeus is going to vibrate out and, and uh, fall out after the car is running. So you got to take your time. You might have to put it together and apart a few times. Um, it's uh, This is a tedious process that you need to protect the chassis. You can see all this yellow tape we have all over it. That's just so while we're leaning in and working on the car that we don't um, uh, scar any of the tubes up. Now, even though this is going to get carbon tube protectors all over it, we still don't want to um, scratch any of the underlying surface. So we take a lot of time to protect all of the, the chassis areas and the painted parts of the car. So next step on this obviously is um, there'll be uh, two guys on wiring and one guy putting components on it. So um, this is just day one and, and they've got a, a pretty good jump on it and I'll, uh, 
I'll give you an update here in a couple days and you'll see a lot more components on it. It'll get a lot of stuff thrown at it pretty fast and then towards the end you'll see it kind of slow down because we're dealing with some more of the meticulous little items and it doesn't look like uh, a lot of progress is being made. But um, by the end of the week we'll have the struts on it, the front wheels and tires, we'll have the rear end housing in it, we'll have all the stuff in the back of the car. Uh, the wiring will be 75% done. So I would say um, roughly here in about three weeks, we should be looking at having this thing at the racetrack. We've got about two weeks of assembly to do here. The uh, customer will come in, we'll fire up the engine, get everything set on that, and then we'll take it to the track and put a few runs on it, see how he does. As you can see, we're under the back of the car now. We're, uh, we've got the, the housing placed underneath, the center section's in it, the four links in it. I just want to touch base on a few things. During the build, we didn't really talk about this much because we don't do any of this during the, the build. This is all done in a separate area of the shop. And so none of this goes together until right now. Like we don't pre-fit any of this stuff. We've got fixturing and, and tooling that, that builds the housing and locates all this stuff so that we don't have to pre-assemble the housing in advance. It's kind of a unique process, but until today, none of this was on this car so that we didn't have to mock up the shocks or the anti-roll bar or the housing or any of that so we 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 build the housing we have uh, dimensions uh, for width and four length spacing and stuff that we want but we build those all in advance and they're sitting on the shelf waiting for plating um, when the car gets done so the housing was completely assembled on the bench third members put in it axles are in it brakes are put on it um, all that's done and then we stick it up under the car and then we'll line it up. So this gives you kind of an idea of how, how things are placed underneath. Now, this is gonna be a top sportsman car, so this is a flanged axle housing. So it's a 4130 uh, sheet metal housing with flanged axles and uh, strange disc brakes. And so the we have lots of different options on housings from um, flanged axle type to, to full floaters, to the uh, modular housing, to the full uh, double throw down billet housing with the custom end belts on it. So, so this is a very nice housing. It's uh, all this stuff is electroless nickel plated, and that gives us good corrosion resistance and uh, it gives no build up on it. So it's real easy to work on. It's you can put a wrench on this stuff and it's not going to hurt it. Um, this housing is more than adequate for this car. This car is going to have about um, oh 1800 to 2000 horsepower. So. This uh, 4130 housing is is well adequate on up into the 2,500, 3,000 horsepower. When you get up over 2,000, you should really consider a floater type um, setup on the axle, which is going to give you a spindle here instead of the uh, the drive flange being made part of the axle. So you have a spindle and a hub, and then just a, a straight uh, spline floater axle. But really nice setup. Um, we've got a uh, a very nice set of Penske shocks on here. Um, we've got the anti-roll bar. You can see we've got it mounted in here, but um, we don't have the arms on it yet. Like I said, this, this just got put in here today. So we've got to put the arms on it yet. The, the links to the um, tabs on the housing are right here above the center of the axle. So we like this placement. This is pretty common um, to be right in front of the rear shocks. The chassis is uh, very heavy duty back here. It's all axed and tied in so that the shocks and the anti-roll work together there's no flex here so um, this is a nice uh, three inch diameter Mark Williams sway bar and you can see it's it turns nice and smooth in there there's no play in it we give uh, what you want on an anti-roll is is a positive um, between each side so you want no deflection from this side to the other side so you've got a nice uh, three inch chrome alley tube in here that has uh, very little torsional flex to it so these arms are uh, aluminum they're going to go on these splines here and then they're going to clamp tight and there's going to be a, a link that goes down from the arm to the top of the housing here. So um, we've got the four link uh, close to where we want it. We'll, uh, we'll finalize that when we get the car down and uh, put it on the scales and set the ride heights. But, but right now we've got it roughed in where we can do the uh, alignment on it. And I, I uh, showed you in some other videos uh, how to do the, the rear end alignment. But uh, wishbones in it. Um, the drive shaft is already done for this car. We, uh, we draw the uh, drive line up complete before we ever start on a car. So there's a uh, CAD drawing of the chassis with the engine placement and the rear end housing. So I know the drive shaft length before we ever put the uh, first tube on the table. 
So the drive shaft is made, it's, it's ready to go in uh, as soon as we get the alignment done. We're gonna have, uh, we have to do some brake line plumbing here yet. So we've got a little spot up here where the brake line is gonna come down through here. It's gonna um, attach to this tab and then the lines are gonna come off to each brake caliper from there. This little hole right here is gonna get another, it's gonna get a 90 degree fitting on it. This is the vent for the housing. So we want the housing vented so that when the uh, when this is spinning, there's gonna it's gonna churn up that oil in there. So we need some way to vent that excess air pressure out of there. So this vent line will run up with the brake lines and it's gonna kinda coil around back here and exit right up here above the uh, uh, anti-roll. And there won't be any oil come out of it. It'll, if any gut gets up in there, it's going to roll right back down and bleed back into the housing after the run. So uh, very common setup here. Um, you can see we've got some weight bar tabs here and we have some weight bar tabs in the back. But um, if we want to uh, get this car to weight and we want to put weight in the middle, more middle rear, we'll use these. Then we have some in the very back of the car to get some on the tail section. But uh, you can see we've got uh, shock mount locations here, canisters for the shocks, lower wheelie bar attachment points, upper wheelie bar attachment points. So uh, this thing's come along quite nicely. They've got a, a good bit of work done in the last uh, week on this.